Hi guys, so I'm going to be talking about the book that I chose for the project, which is called The Opposite of Loneliness, and it is a collection of essays and stories written by Marina Keegan, and what drew me to this book and what made me believe it would be the perfect read for the assignment was this little excerpt that I read on the back of it that says, The Opposite of Loneliness captures the hope, uncertainty, and possibility of her generation and articulates the universal struggle that all of us face as we figure out what we aspire to be and how we can harness our talents to make an impact on the world. And I think this kind of insight is perfect for someone like me and the rest of my classmates who are graduating soon and just need a little push, a little bit of advice about post-grad life. So an overview of the book is that Marina Keegan was a driven and talented Yale student who passed away in a car crash five days after graduation. One of her essays, titled The Opposite of Loneliness, became a viral hit after her death. This book is a collection of her work, both fiction and nonfiction, that her loved ones put together to showcase her talent and outlook on the world. The book discuss discusses struggles and triumphs that we face in life, the introduction is written by one of her professors, Anne Fadiman, and it gives a beautiful insight into who Marina was. I'm going to read a small excerpt from the introduction just to give you guys an idea of the way that Anne described her as a writer and a person. It says that Marina was 21 and sounded 21, a brainy 21, a 21 who knew her way around the English language, a 21 who understood that there were few better subjects than being young and uncertain and starry-eyed and frustrated and hopeful. When she read her work aloud around our seminar table, it would make us snort with laughter, and then it would turn on a dime and break our hearts. And I think that's a really good sentence that describes the book as a whole. I was left speechless after a few times, and it really just moved me over and over after each story. The photo at the bottom is an excerpt from the title essay, and this part just like really made me smile. It's, a, it's talking about like the relationships that you make in college and those kind of things. And it says, when the check is paid and you stay at the table, when it's 4 a.m. and no one goes to bed, that time we did, we went, we saw, we laughed, we felt. And I just really liked that part. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the title essay because it really sets up the book and it starts the book off on a really beautiful note. And um, it really struck a chord with me. It is relatable for every college student getting ready to face the real world and accept the challenge with open arms and understanding. I read it to my roommate because it really just like, it explains everything that I've been feeling recently about having to move on and not identify as like a student athlete or a college student anymore and to not be surrounded by my friends at all times and have to set schedule, things like that. It really touches on that. The, um, excerpt I read that was in the photo on the last slide it's talking about like that's your safe space like when we all sit at the table and chat things like that um, another part of it it says we won't have those next year we won't live on the same block as our friends we won't have a bunch of group texts this scares me more than finding the right job or city or spouse I'm scared of losing this web that we're in and I think that's a really big thing that I've been struggling with recently so reading that seeing it articulated into words really is going to stick with me for a long time. And then in the photo on this slide, this was another part that I underlined because she said, what we have to remember is that we can still do anything. We can change our minds. We can start over. And then it says, another part of it says, the notion that it's too late to do anything is comical. It's hilarious. We're graduating from college. We're so young. We can't, we must not lose this sense of possibility. Because in the end, it's all we have. So I think if you can look up this essay and read it online, it was really powerful. And it was something that really resonated with me because I've been struggling with this thought for a long time. So in my interpretation of the fiction essays, they touch on a lot of different topics. Love, lost love, grief, second guessing, jealousy, settling for less, loneliness, and even more. Um, mostly these stories surrounded and related to situation, situations with others in your life is what I gathered from it, but I feel as though these are very much open to interpretation, and m many people will take them many different ways, so this is just my interpretation of them. So I'm going to talk about three of the stories that stood out the most to me, 
and the first one is titled Cold Pastoral, and it is the story of Claire and her quote-unquote situationship with Brian. That's what we learn about in the first paragraph, how they would say that they liked each other, they would say that they missed each other, but there was never really a label on it. And then very quickly we learn that Brian passes away, and Claire is left with this grief and this missed opportunity with him. And then she slowly finds out that he's not the person that she thought he was. And she's learning to deal with being let down by people and grieving the person that she thought that they were. And I think that's really relevant, especially in my life. In college, you see people come and go and you find out people's true colors. And I think this really spoke to being let down by someone that you didn't really think you could be let down by. The next story was titled The Ingenue. And this one was mostly about jealousy and in the end settling for someone. And I think that jealousy is something that everyone deals with no matter how hard they try to deny that they do. And it's something that we really need to work on. Like internally, we need to focus on why we're feeling the jealousy. And I think this story does a great job of explaining that. Explaining how you can look inward and see why you're jealous at the end of the day. And not project as much. And I think that's something that was really valuable for me, especially at this time in college when there's lots of comparing to other people. And so this lesson is something that I will take forward with me. Like I said, these stories relate a lot to like other people in your life and love. And so the last one was titled The Baggage Claim. And this one was about this man who bought a ring for his girlfriend, but then he was kind of second guessing it and wasn't quite sure. And then they were at the store and he second guessed his purchase. And it just was kind of like a snowball effect to him second-guessing everything in his life and his life with this woman. And I think it's a type of thing that explains, like, waiting for the perfect opportunity, waiting for the right person is going to be worth it. Because being empathetic with and feeling his second-guessing in the story was heartbreaking and kind of painful to read. So it's the type of thing where it's like, you do not want to experience this in real life and you want to work your hardest to feel confident feel right and correct in your decisions and so that's what I took out of these three stories and I guess if you read them it's up to you what you take out of it but for the nonfiction essays it was more science philosophical questions inward reflection and experience that went into the stories that Marina wrote they touch upon issues we all deal with and thoughts we all have And I think she writes in a very raw and relatable way. These were the kind of stories where it's like, okay, someone else thinks this too. It's the kind of thing where you push the thought deep inside and you don't really talk about it much. And I think I'm going to start with Against the Grain because that one was the type of thing where it's like, oh, like, I'm not the only person who thinks this way. I'm not the only person who has felt this way. And she's discussing her celiac disease and how when she was younger, it was like, Her mother made a big stink out of it. She would call her teachers and kind of embarrass her in front of other kids. And she was always embarrassed and never grateful for all the work and effort that her mother put in and the love behind her mother's actions. And I think that's something we take for granted a lot as children, especially into our teen years, is like our parents and or caregivers love and affection and attention is the type of thing that in the moment it can be so annoying. It can be so over dramatic and you can roll your eyes and hate it and wish it wasn't happening but looking back on it you are appreciative of it and we need to be more appreciative of the people in our lives care for us no matter the embarrassment or the obnoxiousness or anything like that so that story really just like hit deep with me because it's something I feel we all experience why we care about whales was the other story that I wanted to discuss and it was a story of humanity and our sometimes lack of it. Um, Marina discusses how a bunch of these whales were um, washed up on the shore and people were trying to save their lives and get them back to the ocean. But she was wondering if they would do the same for their neighbor who was in crisis. And how sometimes we put animals on this pedestal above people and we lack the humanity for one another. And how... Our love for rescuing animals, but our apprehension to do it are strangers. You don't know that animal. You haven't spoken to that animal. You don't understand its thinking. and You don't have this love for it that is deep on the connection that you may have with the person. 
but yet you still put it on this pedestal and you still work to do anything you can to save it. And I think sometimes if we just apply that a little bit to strangers we see on the street or people we interact with, the world may be a better place. And so that story really touches upon that. So overall, this book had a lot of wonderful themes to it that really made me think, made me happy, made me sad. And there are a lot of themes that I will think about moving forward in a device and helpful stories. And I really think that this book was a great read for the purpose that it was the assignment. And thank you guys for listening. And I hope maybe this inspired you to go pick it up and read it. Thank you guys.